Good afternoon, guys. The time is four minutes, sorry, 12 minutes past four. Nearly got that wrong there. Um, I'm Alex and I'm with you for the next hour. And today we are joined by a band I've had the pleasure of going to a gig with, with my good friend Charlie. And they completely just took me by surprise. And I was, I was there, like literally just gobsmacked the whole time. The performance... The lyrics, everything was amazing. These guys sold out Satan's Hollow in under two weeks. How you do that, I simply don't understand. Guys, do you want to introduce yourselves? Hello, I'm Josh. Hello, I'm Zach. And I'm Jack. And we are the horror. The horror. All the the (laughs) harrowing. (laughs) Harrowing. That is correct. I am joined by the incredible horror. How are you guys? How have you guys been? Yeah, really good, man. Had a good day. Had a very good day. I know you got a little bit lost on the way here, but... A little bit. You're you're here now. There's a nice park, though, that Peel Park. Oh, it's it's actually really nice. Like, you know... Yeah. When you go for like early morning runs in Pill Park, it's actually really peaceful. Yeah. Um, we've we played past a runner on the way here. <laughs> yeah, actually. there's yeah. so so many runners here. So, so many, so many runners in in Manchester. It's ridiculous. But um, we're gonna we're gonna chat to you guys a bit about sort of your career, um, your career as a boy band, sort of what sort of music you like to make, your inspirations and stuff like that. Um, but one question I sort of wanted to ask you first of all was like, where did it all start for you guys? Like, where did sort of how I come from and like how did you sort of get into music uh well like kind of jack came up to me he's like i want to be in a boy band <laughs> <laughs> and i said i know just the guy and then i rang zach up uh-huh. and he said i want to be in a boy band you said you love um hit what? me with a bit of in sync and sync sync yeah and you wanted to be that's what we became yeah so for those that obviously don't know at home um you play the guitar yeah, I play the guitar. Zach from the horror. <laughs> <laughs> and then would you... I play drums. Jack. And then Jack. lead lead. Uh, I I feel like you need a better thing than lead vocalist. Frontman. Showman. Yeah. I like that. Showman. Yeah. Showstopper. The greatest showman. <laughs> Hugh Jackman. <laughs> Hugh Jackman's the fourth member of our band. Yeah. I, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't doubt it, man. I wish. <laughs> <laughs> I wish. <laughs> no, I mean the performance was insane. But um, so, would you say like your passion for music sort of stemmed when you all basically collectively came together to create like this boy band and like this sort of force to be reckoned with? Uh, yeah. We're not a boy band. Not How would you describe band. yourself? Because I would. You I think would. We're a boy I would. Band. I. In terms of sort of the logics of music, I would say. Yes, because you're obviously three lads in a band, mm-hmm. yes. But in terms of the Doesn't music in terms of the music that you make and like the genre fluidity, I would say no. So it's open to sort of interpretation. Would, so you, I, would you call Muse a boy band? No, but then would you class would you class like Guns N' Roses and like A C D C as a boy band as well? Nope. No. But then some people could argue that they are though because they're boys they're in, like a band. in a band. So we are it's true we are boys in a band, but boy band, I think in it's it's like one, sense. Yeah. It's like I think people think boy band like one direction, like mm. sort of pop music, like that sort of boy band. Yeah. Basically we're sexy enough to be a boy band. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's, so it's a compliment, right? I guess so. So <laughs> I guess so. I think it ties really well actually into what you said. So how it's kind of started there yeah, was there yeah, was yeah. definitely you know f- we've been together like four or five years now so four or five years ago we were, we were a bit more fresh-faced and less burnt out from doing all these gigs <laughs> less hers <or> <laughs> less, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um i think for sure our, our music was less alternative it was definitely more in that pop spectrum yeah and being young guys three lads in a in a band for sure you know you get that that label and yeah I think, unfortunately, f- unfortunately, because I'm not mocking it, I think we definitely played on that fact. And I think that was the cleverest thing we could have done. I think that's intelligent. And you use what you're given in a certain situation, and then we use that, and, sort of, and we evolved yeah. it. Yeah, I think, I think that's a very clever thing to do, because I think, especially nowadays, with sort of the likes of TikTok and sort of people mm-hmm. blowing up on TikTok, I feel a lot of artists can sort of blow up in their time and sort of their prime but then forget that a their audience is always growing up so they need to adapt to sort of their audience because 
I know like when I was younger, I used to listen to sort of one sort of genre of music and sort of be focused on that. And it's like, as you get older, you explore more genres of music. And it's like, you always have sort of that original audience that is sort of your hardcore diehard fans. But then you'll always, if you adapt, you'll sort of create a bigger audience to people who are opening to listening to new music. And it's like, that's definitely me. Because it's like, I, if you were to ask me like 10 years ago, would I ever listen to like My Chemical Romance or like Green Day? I would never have done it. But it's like, I I actually like really respect some of the music that they make. And it's like, especially like with you guys, like the dedication and the time and like the the talent that even goes into like performing and making your tracks is insane. Like when I was watching like drum, like you're doing drums and a guitar and it was like, what is going on, man? Like just fully just going for it. And I was just like, just, yeah, just yeah, in my element. I was like, yeah, this is, this is it. But yeah, it's like, I feel like definitely sort of understanding the ability to adapt makes like a great sort of group of talent. Mm -hmm. I feel yeah, like I think it's the world we live in now, isn't it? With music, I think a lot of people now are like that. Where you know it's not just one thing that people like anymore. You know, especially with TikTok, where every type of music is blowing up on a platform like that. It's like I don't think there is any rules anymore. That's I think that's if you the like it, you like yeah. It. I no. think I think that's the thing that I that sort of made me want to listen to you guys more because you sort of unknowingly gave me the message of music doesn't have to sort of fit this label you mm. can it can be whatever you want it to be and it doesn't have to fit this genre like in this box it you can make it out to be whatever you want it to be and i feel like that fluidity of basically you can take this song and make of it as you will i think that's what a lot of people prefer because they're able to relate to it in different ways rather than this is your song this is your track this is what it is da, da, da. and i feel like when you allow your own audience to interpret something in their own way i feel like you connect with them on a sort of better level but um so. but um yeah, going on from sort of where your sort of journey started what was like sort of the early highlights of like your life and like your sort of band life oh um good question i always think to when we spent like every day on the road hmm. a year ago how long did you spend oh mate we did i think in one year we did must have done 200 plus gigs. 200 gigs in i year. think uh, well yeah me and, wow. me and jack i think figured this more, out right? didn't we? we were bored in lockdown one day and we were just talking <laughs> on our group chat and we were like how many gigs did we do the, over these two years so this um, is like a promo tour where we do so some days we do five hour long shows wow a day yeah different groups of people and that's hardcore um, unis colleges all all sorts so the amount of gigs we did in that year was insane it was like a one and a half academic years five shows a day for five days a week that is so you do the maths it's like it's mm. insane in no sleep. Sleep. it's like over a thousand <laughs> no shows sleep. no a thousand we, gigs that's... we did an average as well didn't we so we was like some days we might play one or two shows in a day which was a, a, a yes like only a one show <laughs> yeah um and so we did like a average of like uh let's say we played three shows throughout the week every day so five days or whatever um and even during that time, we'd tour as well. So we'd do a, a, one of our full UK tours. Um, and at that time, we were playing smaller festivals. So that was before we did all the big ones. Um, and even still, it was like, like Zach said, we was pushing like 1,500 shows for mm -hmm. yeah. a year and a half time, which nobody was doing apart from us. So. That's, that's insane. I, I, feel, I really like respect like when bands sort of go out of their way or like artists go out of their way to sort of just go on look, go and do loads of gigs because it's like for like people don't understand the effort and like the time and sort of even the stress that can go into it and like yeah. the, the the amount it dra it must drain you like crazy i mean like even were you not drained after your performance as, after satan's like because yeah. that looks like hardcore man that's why you know you turn to alcohol and drugs. Really. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, fair play, mate. fair play, fair play. No, I think it's a little it's... bit different, isn't it? When it's our show, yeah, it's it's really exhilarating and for sure it's knackering. But there's a sense of like I, 
all the fruit of your labor yeah, yeah you see yeah. it physically and that's yeah. what was i think really difficult like about covid was you couldn't really see yeah that end yeah. product of all the hard work but when we were doing this really intense promo tour for a year and a half it, we would we were dead after like especially we stopped it actually because of uh the pandemic and i i look at pictures of us like early 2020 and we we are just just zombified like, <laughs> we, like like yeah it's like 1500 shows down so yeah. Skinny. <laughs> yeah so skinny and pale i think we've been to every mcdonald's in the country like i swear to god wow wow we'll be right back and talk about about more about mcdonald's <laughs> in a second um we're going to listen to a bit of craigley and the humblebees this is haters way on shock radio 